Hello everyone, I'm the Viking General and this is the tier list for the Bushido Arts. I got this idea from a commenter, Fletcher, a ship with many sisters. I wanted to cover the arts for a long time but couldn't find a suitable format. Making multiple videos for a single tree would diffuse the knowledge, but a normal video covering everything would be too long. I feel this is the perfect middle ground to get all the knowledge across. I will rank the arts based on the following criteria. The effect, how long it takes to master them, and the place of the art in the art tree. I will not consider what each art unlocks, since that gives an unfair advantage to the first few arts in the tree. S tier will mean it's an extremely good art and should be prioritized above everything else. A tier will mean it's a good art for every clan or playstyle. B tier means it's a good art for some clans or playstyles. C tier means it's useful for every clan or playstyle. D tier means it's good for only a single clan or useful for some clans or playstyles. E tier means it's only worthwhile in special cases or for roleplay purposes. B tier means it's only used is as a pathing node. So with all that being said, let's begin. First up is the Bushido art itself from the Bushido tree. And this it will go straight to S tier. It is an extremely good art, especially for the amount of time it takes and it's available right away. Um, it gives one morale for all units, which isn't the reason why it's so good, but it, the main thing is it unlocks the sword school building and the katana samurai. Katana samurai are basically the heavy hitters of your armies. I know it's possible to finish an entire campaign without recruiting a single samurai, but still I think it is a very important building, especially for only two turns of investment. Next we will have bow expertise. Bow expertise for me personally is a uh, B tier, mainly because I've been downing between A or B tier for uh, bow expertise because the plus 10% accuracy for all bow units is very good. Don't get me wrong on that one. It also unlocks the bow master dojo, which is also a very good building for military purposes. However, I don't think all clans or playstyles really rely on archers that much. So while the bonus is good, it isn't for every clan, I would say, or every playstyle. And, th and that's why it drops down to B tier for me. Uh, and also the 10% accuracy bonus is mostly uh, noticeable on units with already high accuracy, such as the Bow Warrior Monks. And those are pretty late tier units. This is also the reason why I would say Q Jutsu Mastery is B tier as well. It's this uh, Kyujutsu match is definitely B tier, but uh, the bow expertise might might shift to A tier in some cases. But Kyujutsu Master is definitely B tier since so it is a very late game art. The bonus isn't extremely good, 10% reload rate for all bow units, and unlocks the legendary Kudo school, which will allow you to get even more bonuses for your archers. So it's very good for playstyles and clans which focus on archery. However, the next art, Way of the Bow, is definitely going to be in A tier, not for the building it unlocks because it is very good, but because of the fire arrows. Fire arrows are a very important uh, part of your army arsenal because you will be able to burn down enemy archery towers, which which are very useful during offensive sieges but they are also useful for naval battles where you are actually able to set fire to enemy ships and of course just on the field using fire arrows who have a little bit more impact especially for targeting armored units next we will get to form and uh, form will be for me will be a c tier it is, i think it is useful for every clan it's, it isn't, it isn't a very powerful effect, 2% uh, running speed for all units of battles. It's, it's very nice, especially since battles are very quickly in Shogun 2. Being able to flank quicker will save more men uh, in the long run. It also unlocks uh, a lot of good cavalry options with the Bajutsu Master Dojo. And it also enables Swooping Crane which is basically the Canterbury circle from other Total War games where you have or horse archers running around in circles and shooting the enemy. Just a decent art all around and especially because it's still relatively easy to access. The next art will be Heaven and Earth. I always mispronounce it as Haven and Earth for some reason, but it is Heaven and Earth and it will go straight to S tier and it will be even better than the Bushido art. Honestly, Heaven and Earth is for me Hands down the best art in the Bushido tree. Uh, you will really want to get this as soon as possible. It gives 
50% ammunition for all bow units, which will make offensive sieges much easier. You'll be able to use your archers to much greater effect. It also gets a whopping 5% to unit replenishment to all armies. And on top of that, it also unlocks the building of the encampment buildings, which are one of the best buildings for military purposes in the game. All around, extremely good art. Next up, we will get to Horse Mastery. And this is one of the first arts which I really feel is getting dragged down by the fact it is so relatively late in the tree. Uh, but it will still get a B tier for some clans which are playstyles would really like to focus on cavalry. This is a very good art to get, but it's still very useful for all clans because the 5% movement range for armies on the campaign map is a very important bonus. However, like I said, it is pretty late in the tree and it also takes a lot of time to, to master. If it wouldn't be so late in the tree, it would definitely be an A rank just simply because of the 5% movement range for all the armies. All right, now we get to the Shi art. Shi art? I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Um, I have been dialing on this one quite some time. I think I, I I ended up putting it in C tier, but it might also be in D tier uh, D tier as well, since it's the final art in the entire tree. You're probably never never going to get it anyway. Yeah, I'm going to leave it in D tier. The bonuses that it gives aren't that important as well. Uh, charge bonus negligible. Defense for all units, that's a decent one. Morale for all units plus one. At that point of the game, you, your units are basically unbreakable anyway. 5% uh, recruitment cost reduction at this point in the game you have all the money you need so it has a little bit of everything that is it's nice to have but like I said so late in the tree you know what I, I actually am going to shift it down to E tier you will only get it in very special cases I don't think it, it is ever warranted to go for this art especially since you also need the five element art which we'll get to later but first we are going to go to strategy of attack and strategy of attack for me will get a D tier actually um it is a very easy art to master but the bonus it gives it's a charge bonus for all units honestly not that not that big of a deal it is useful for some clans which really want to play aggressively uh and then it's very good for the data clan because that really compounds on their charge bonus and, and it unlocks the siege engineers works for firebomb purse and, and they're only useful in very special cases so pretty weak art uh, luckily it is early on in the tree otherwise it would probably have uh, been shifted down to E tier but on the other hand the strategy of defense will go straight to A tier because it gives a bonus of one defense for all units which is much more impactful since base defense is very hard to come by in Shogun 2 and it also unlocks the Naganata Dojo and the Naganata Samurai which can completely be the workhorses of your army then we get to uh, the five elements and the five elements sadly will just be a pathing art. The only thing it offers is 20% increase to the general's influence radius. Which don't get me wrong, isn't it isn't to be underestimated. Your general's influence radius is important, but only in the early game. Because like I said, end game at the point where you will probably unlock this art, you will have made your troops so experienced, or you have such good generals anyway, that the 20% increase to the general's influence is completely worthless. So that's why it's only a pathing art. So now we have Attack by Fire, which is a D tier. The reason why it gets D tier is it unlocks the powder making building, and the powder maker is the most important building for the Ultima clan. This art, for if, if you're playing the Ultima clan, you really need this art this this is the one you want to brush as well and luckily it is right after heaven and earth so it's pretty easy to get as well the powder maker will unlock all the important units for the ultimate clan that's why it gets a detail because of the single important use for the ultimate clan otherwise it would probably be more like a role play where you really want to focus on match locks and speaking of match locks we will now get to the gunpowder mastery art and the gunpowder mastery art will get the E tier uh, because it is only used for very special cases. I have made an entire series about how to use match locks and honestly you get them so late in the campaign that they're not useful. So you only really want to get this art if you want to go for match locks. So for me, that's role play purposes. It isn't a viable strategy. So let's get some uh, naval stuff in. First off, uh, Master of the Waves. 
we are going to continue on the E tier. You will never really want to get Master of the Waves. The bonus that it gives 10% movement speed of our ships in battle, not really that powerful. 10% recruiting cost of ships. Again, at this point in the game, you will have so much money so that it doesn't really matter. It does unlock all the final tiers of strong ships, but your navy just isn't as important in Shogun 2 as your army. For the same reason, uh, naval expertise will also go into uh, into E tier. The turning speed is a, is, is a little bit better than the 10% movement speed. It does unlock the Red Seal Company and the Pirate Fortress. If you really want to roleplay as a naval clan, um, those two arts are very useful. You really want to get those. They, they really do help your naval game. But from a general game perspective, they are pretty much worthless. However, Way of the Sea, I would still, I, I would actually rank as, as a D tier. Um, because you will probably need your navy at some point in the game, especially if you want to take over the Shikoku area, the island which uh, the Chosokabe clan starts on. And bonuses that it gives are pretty good as well. All your fleets will be able to engage in night battles. 10% movement range for all ships on the campaign map is also very useful. You can sometimes just use your navy to actually transport troops from one point of your territory to the other because ships are much faster than just walking. And it only takes four turns to master this art. So it's a pretty cheap art to get and it will... It will probably help in, in some cases. Well, that's why it gets a D tier because some clients are really able to get some use out of it. Next, we get to the to the Sojutsu Mastery. And this is... For me, it's a E tier. It's, it's an E tier. Basically, it, it, may, it makes your Yari Samurai better. And honestly, Yari Samurai, don't get me wrong, they, are, they can be very useful. But they're really... You really don't want to invest anything in them. And you will probably only get this mastery when you are trying to do some role-playing or special thing with your Yari Samurai. That's why it gets E tier. This is probably also the same thing for Spear Expertise. For me personally, I don't really like the Spear Square that uh, it unlocks. I much prefer the yari wall and again it's only to help with the yari samurai it does give one experience for all spear, spear wielding units and the one experience you get for me isn't that impactful especially as, as you can see with the next art which is with spear for me it's even just a pathing node sometimes i do get this art but it's mainly because i forget that i actually have to switch my arts after uh, unlocking strategy of defense but it's either one experience for all spear wielding recruits or Haven and Earth. I really don't know. I really know what I'm going to go for at that point. So down to the last three, we will now have first the Genjutsu Mastery, which is for me a D tier. Again, it only gives the experience bonus, and I don't value experience bonus that much. Especially late game, you will have your experience armies running around anyway. It is very good if you want to play Shimatsu clan because the Shimatsu katana heroes are absolute beasts in melee. Those units really shine, but you'll probably get to this point a little bit too late in, in the game to really make use of it. The pen penultimate entry in this list will be Wave the Sword, which will go straight to B tier uh, because it unlocks the Nodachi samurai and the nodachi uh, dojo again the one experience is important but the main focus here is the nodachi samurai nodachi samurai are really good units however they are pretty pretty pricey and it's pretty hard to use them well and they're only good for certain play styles or certain clans especially of course the adate clan and for the same reason that we have the sword gets the beat tier, sword expertise gets beat here as well a little bit lower though uh, because you really want to unlock the buff. If you if you go for with the sword, if you go for Nodachi Samurai, you also want the sword expertise because that actually unlocks the Banzai ability for your Nodachi Samurai, which is a very powerful ability to have. So that wraps up my tier list. To help visualize how this looks on the tree, look at the image on the screen, where I've color-coded each art on the tree corresponding to that rank. Feel free to screenshot it for later use but I will also share this in our Discord server. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree, or if you think I missed something completely, or simply leave a like or dislike. If you haven't already seen it, I recommend also watching the tier list for the Way of the Chi Tree. Thank you for watching.